Hello friends. Today I came back with another new topic which is important for PG preparation. Our topic is about parathyroid gland. In that about hypoparathyroidism, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. These terms are headache for our preparation and kill our valuable time. To make it easy for you, I am making this video. Now coming to our topic First of all, I am going to tell you about normal levels of calcium. See, normal levels of calcium are 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. And normal levels of phosphate are 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. These are the phosphate levels for adult. Normal levels of phosphate are more for children than adult because bone forming capacity for children are more. Now, coming to the function of parathormone. See, parathormone acts on bone and this is the fastest way to increase the calcium. And parathormone increases the calcium and decreases the phosphate. So, how to remember this? Parathormone is decreasing phosphate. Parathormone is also called as PTH. Now, I am telling you small mnemonic. That is, PTH means Phosphate thrashing hormone. So, parathormone decreases phosphate by increasing ex excretion of phosphate via kidney. So, parathormone increases calcium and decreases phosphate levels. Now, what are the functions of parathormone? Parathormone is involved both in bone formation and bone destruction. Again, I am repeating this. Parathormone is involved both bone formation and bone destruction. Now, I am coming to the what are the markers for the bone formation. Markers for the bone formation. They are alkaline phosphate, osteocalcin, propeptide of type 1 collagen. What are the markers for bone resorption? These are telopeptides hydroxylysine, hydroxyproline and hydroxypyridonolin. Again I am repeating markers. What are the markers for bone formation? They are alkaline phosphate, osteocalcin, propeptide of type 1 collagen. What are the markers for bone resorption? They are telopeptides, hydroxyproline, hydroxylysine, hydroxypyridonolin. These are the important bits that are asked in our PG preparation. Now, as I already told, parathormone increases calcium and decreases phosphate. So what happens in hypoparathyroidism? In hypoparathyroidism, parathormone levels are decreased. The secretion from the gland, the parathormone levels are decreased. So there will be decreased calcium levels and increased phosphate levels in case of hypoparathyroidism that is primary hypoparathyroidism again i am repeating this in primary hypoparathyroidism parathormone levels are decreased as the parathormone levels are decreased so there will be decreased calcium and increased phosphate levels okay friends this is about primary hypoparathyroidism. Then what is pseudo hypoparathyroidism? Pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. These two terms are very headache for our preparation and they will kill our time. So I am going to explain the uh, main crux of parathormone function and I am going to these differences. Come. Let's go to parathyroid, uh, parathyroid gland first. From parathyroid gland, parathormone is released. This parathormone acts on parathormone receptor that is GS alpha. After acting on receptor, there will be two functions for parathormone. As I already told, there will be bone formation and bone destruction. If osteoclast activating factors are activated, osteoclast will be activated and there will be calcium increase. And another function is bone formation. Now I am going to explain how parathormone is involved in bone formation. Parathormone, after acting on GS alpha via adenylase cyclase, it increases protein kinase A, that is by acting ATP is converted into cyclic AMP. This protein kinase A, PKA, is involved in transcription, which leads to bone formation. 
again i am repeating the functions of parathormon from parathyroid gland there will be secretion of parathormon this parathormon acts on parathormon receptors this parathormon receptors it may be it is increasing the action of osteoclast activating factors where the osteoclasts are activated and increases calcium another function is bone formation it is explained by adenylase cyclase it converts atp to cyclic amp and then pk is increased and so there will be transcription which leads to bone formation now what happens uh, if there is no transcription in case in case in any 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 other disease if there is transcription defect is there there will be no bone formation so there will be short metacarpals short metatarsals short stature and round faces this whole picture is described as albright's osteodystrophy again i am repeating in any other condition where the transcription is blocked or defective there will be no bone formation so short there will be short metacarpals short metatarsals short stature and round faces this whole picture is described as albright's osteodystrophy now coming to the differences between pseudo hypoparathyroidism and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism see the main difference for uh, pseudo hypoparathyroidism and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism is the site of defectiveness that is in pseudo hypoparathyroidism there is defect in the receptor there will be def uh, defect in the receptor that is there will be no bone formation and as well as no osteoclast activating factors action so there will be decrease in the calcium as there is uh, no transcription there will be albright's osteodystrophy also so again i am repeating in pseudo hypoparathyroidism there will be defect in the receptor so there will be decrease in the osteoclast activating factors so no activation of osteoclast activating factors so calcium is decreased c and what about this transcription as receptor is not functioning as it is resistant to receptor so there will be transcription defect also which can be seen as albright's osteodystrophy hmm. now coming to pseudo pseudo para hyper uh, hypoparathyroidism in which the receptor is normal but the defect lies in pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism uh, is transcription where the osteoclast activating factors are normal so the no the calcium levels will be normal as the transcription is defective there will be albright's osteodystrophy in pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism so the difference main difference is in pseudo hypoparathyroidism albright's osteodystrophy is present with decreased calcium levels whereas in pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism albright's osteodystrophy is present but there will be normal calcium levels this is the main difference for the pseudo hypoparathyroidism and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism now as these are important topics again i am repeating these two see the site of defectiveness for pseudo hypoparathyroidism is the receptor so there will be no osteoclast function so calcium levels will be decreased and as there is no transcription function also there will be albright's osteodystrophy picture so in pseudo hypoparathyroidism both calcium is decreased and albright's osteodystrophy is present whereas in pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism the receptor is normal but the transcription is defective so there will be normal calcium as the receptor is normal osteoclast activating factors are activated and calcium is increased so there will be normal calcium but the transcription is defective so there will be albright's osteodystrophy so in statements they will give as albright's uh, they will mention albright's osteodystrophy with decreased calcium then we should go for pseudo hypoparathyroidism if they mention albright's osteodystrophy with normal calcium we should go for pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism uh, they can also mention without albright's osteodystrophy they can also mention any of these features like short metacarpals with decreased calcium then we should go for pseudo hypoparathyroidism short metacarpals with normal calcium then we should go for pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism then what about primary hypoparathyroidism in primary hypoparathyroidism they will mention as decreased calcium levels with normal metacarpals means 
if in question any of these features like short metacarpals short metatarsals short stature round faces any of these features are mentioned then first rule out the primary hypoparathyroidism option that means in primary hypoparathyroidism there will be no albright foster dystrophy there will be decreased calcium with normal metacarpals normal metatarsals short normal stature and there will be no round faces Okay friends, these are the differences between pseudo-hypoparathyroidism and pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. Friends, now coming to another important bit that is when GS-alpha is hyper-functioning mutation is present, there will be McCune-Albright syndrome. What is McCune-Albright syndrome? The features of precocious puberty, mental retardation and fibrous dysplasia. This fibrous dysplasia is polyostotic. They will mention as monoostotic. Please remember this fibrous dysplasia is polyostotic. So, in GS alpha hyperfunctioning, there will be McCune Albright syndrome. Then, what will happen for the GS alpha loss of function? Then, we will get Albright's osteodystrophy. So, the difference for McCune Albright's and Albright's osteodystrophy is the hyperfunctioning of GS alpha will get McCune Albright syndrome. The features are precocious puberty, mental retardation, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. Whereas in case of Albright's osteodystrophy, there will be loss of function of GS alpha. Friends, this is about hypoparathyroidism, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. If any queries are present, please let me know in comment session. Please like, share and subscribe this video. Thank you.